If you love someone with PTSD or complex trauma, you've probably heard the term triggers before. That's what we're going to talk about today, how to support your partner to recognize and manage their PTSD triggers. I'm Carla Dawes, trauma-informed transformational coach and founder of Rising Into Resilience, a coaching and support resource for loved ones of trauma survivors. Triggers are a big subject and getting clear on your loved one's triggers can make all the difference between a peaceful day and a day or longer filled with chaos and stress, sometimes for your whole family. I think you know what I'm talking about. So today we're answering some common questions that PTSD partners have, including what are some common triggers? How do we identify them? And how can we best support our loved ones when they're triggered have a flashback or a panic attack, or become emotionally dysregulated by a PTSD episode. Your loved one with PTSD probably lives in a constant state of physical and emotional distress, and many different things can trigger their emotions and trauma reactions. We can generally categorize triggers into two categories, external triggers and internal triggers. External triggers can be things like news stories, specific places or locations, holidays or anniversaries of events, uh, an argument or a relational situation where another person's emotions or reactions can be triggering. Movies or TV shows are obvious, smells, sounds or tastes, as well as maybe witnessing something distressing. Internal triggers can be really difficult to understand and in some cases it can take a really long time to recognize and identify them because they're often imperceptible, even to your partner. Things like bodily sensations, distressing memories, emotions such as anger, sadness, anxiety, even a racing heartbeat. Sometimes physical pain or sensations such as muscle tension or feelings such as loneliness, feeling abandoned or vulnerable, bad dreams or frightening thoughts. These are just a few examples. Uh, your loved one will have their own set of unique triggers and recognizing them and understanding them takes work and communication. And it can be incredibly hard and dysregulating for your loved one to start to recognize and talk about their triggers. So have patience, have compassion, and be willing to have hard conversations that will probably be dysregulating for everyone. So how do we identify triggers? Well, we start by using our own powers of observation and attunement with our loved one uh, to recognize their triggers. Your loved one might or might not already know what their triggers are. So start to take note of patterns, write things down, record ups and downs, you can record things like the time of the month, the week, or the day. Um, for example, if your loved one is particularly dysregulated every week on Sunday, that could be an opportunity to open up a discussion about what that could be about, or at least to build an awareness that more care and compassion is required on Sundays. Other associations you can start to make and note include places, people or interactions, the weather, sights, sounds or smells, um, feelings or emotions or physical sensations they tell you they have. For example, I had one client whose partner had a really hard time working out because every time his heart rate went up, it triggered anxiety in him because his brain recognized this reaction in his body as a memory of his trauma. And it just triggered him. Uh, it can be that simple or complicated, I guess. Knowing the patterns is what can help you to manage them. When panic attacks and PTSD episodes or, emotionally, or emotional dysregulation or reactivity arise, our loved one's bodies are automatically telling them that they're unsafe. And they're often emotionally flooded and they can act irrationally in those situations. One of the hardest but most important things is to stay regulated ourselves and recognize that it's not about us. Wait, what? I know, that's right. One of the hardest things is doing our best not to take their fluctuating moods personally and do our own work to make sure that we can stay regulated during these times. That's the work we do with partners in Rising Into Resilience. 
So what do you do when our loved ones become dysregulated, suddenly have a mood shift or start to have a panic attack or dissociate? Well, we can start by using safe grounding phrases that bring them back into the present moment and back into their bodies. This can be very helpful. Here are a few things that you can try starting with safety. Remember, their bodies are telling them they're unsafe. So as long as that's not actually true, you wanna help them get back into their bodies so they can take rational control of the situation. So you can say things like, you're safe right now. I'm here with you. This is just an emotional flashback. You're totally safe. Or you can also say things that orient them back into the present moment and into their bodies, such as tell me five things that you see right now, or what color are my eyes? Maybe the most powerful of all is what can I do to support you right now? They might not even know what that is, but if they know you're there for them, that might be enough to simply calm them and help them start to re-regulate their nervous system. Anything that you can do to help your loved one come back into the present and ground and reset their biological reaction. Just be sure that you have conversations with your loved one so that you can choose actions and phrases that are not distressing to them. For example, I know that my partner finds it very grounding and calming when I rest my hand gently on his forearm and say, I'm here with you. Other partners might not respond well to that action. So take a team approach and figure out what's going to work for everyone. Have an honest and thoughtful conversation with your loved one at a time when you're both calm and regulated. That is the key. It will help you come up with a joint plan to deal with their reactions to their triggers that will inevitably arise. Together, you can handle anything. Put in place the practices that you need also to regulate you as well. Recognizing the triggers and helping to build in the regulation techniques that help calm our loved ones and our own nervous systems can be very important coping strategies. If possible, talk to your loved one's therapist or counselor and ask for ideas to help when triggers arise. Of course, ask your loved one for permission for this as well. I hope you found this video helpful and if you know someone who loves a trauma survivor and might benefit from this information, please share the video with them. Thanks for watching and remember to keep each other safe.